This is an upgraded Z-axis for a 3040 hobby CNC machine. The uh, primary part is here with the uh, linear rails and these four bearing blocks. Just slightly below those bearing blocks is this large aluminium nut that slides on the ball screw. On both ends is inductive limit switches. Uh, they have to run at a reasonable voltage, 12, 15 volts. Uh, they don't actually function at uh, 5 or 6, unfortunately. They will detect uh, both steel and aluminium. Uh, they're better off detecting steel. They'll get a, uh, a closer rating to their uh, regular distance. Uh, this one can actually detect the metal of this nut as it moves in. On the other end, I've placed a uh, a small rectangular, oh, a small right angle aluminium uh, onto the bottom of the spindle mount plate. And as this approaches the uh, the sensor, the sensor detects this piece of metal and then will stop. This is the uh, the spindle plate. One of the advantages of having a CNC around when you're making a homemade CNC is that you can use the existing CNC to drill out all of these holes. I've hand drilled the countersinks which is why they look a little on the homemade side. The profile cut around here and the, the cornering was all done on a CNC. Uh, I found that mounting the protection for the lead screw um, just drilling and tapping a couple of M3s in the bottom of the, the spindle plate and again a couple of right angle uh, aluminium brackets and just drilling out small holes in the bottom. The primary construction is a, uh, a quarter inch aluminium plate which runs uh, it's about 360 mil across these uh, linear rails and the ball screw are 300 mil. So you've got at the base a uh, quarter inch and then a half inch underneath the lead screw and that makes the height work out quite well so that you don't have to drill out the base of here the actual nut will uh, slide along and not interact with the, the bottom a lot of the uh, distances are fairly tight uh, as you can see here there's not a great deal of distance either side there and there's not much wasted space over here or again on the other side uh, the idea is to keep the compaction uh, so that you don't show up too much of your uh, Y movement or the gantry axis movement because these will hit the sides of the gantry. A fairly standard uh, steel bracket here. Uh, cut out a little bit of the aluminium here so that the, uh, the support can go in. And a little bit of uh, washers for offsetting. This was done so that the motor could be moved up a little bit so that the shaft of the motor itself and the coupler uh, was moved back a little bit. Obviously this coupler needs a slight bit of adjustment but uh, it's a reasonable distance. Uh, below here again there's a few spaces just in here to keep this bracket down a little bit just to sort of try and get the stepper motor alignment um, reasonably in plane with the lead screw so that the coupler doesn't have a hell of a lot of work to do. The more you, uh, the more you start putting these to get together, the more things, uh, choices, and uh, areas that are uh, going to make it difficult to come out to bite you. On the bottom side, the uh, bearing block is bolted to this steel. Uh, underneath the steel, this is aluminium in here. The lighting doesn't really work incredibly well. And much better. Uh, so the aluminium had the corner rounded so that it fits flush in there. And there and back here are both for actually mounting to the gantry. The lower mount here just uses a, a square bit of aluminium which runs the, uh, the full length. And that was uh, drilled out in two locations to attach this plate and to attach onto the actual uh, Z-axis. Again, the idea being to uh, not protrude in this uh, and hit the gantry too much.
Um, since these have to operate at 15 volts, there's a, a little transistor circuit at the other end that actually hooks up to the, the limit switches on the smoothie board, which seem to be the, the best way of doing that. The cabling for the uh, servo motor and the, uh, the end stops of these guys, which eventually come down to these standard aviation plugs, 4-pin. The stepper has got uh, two yellows and two oranges, one for each coil, so it doesn't really matter too much as long as you get the coils wired up the right way. And uh, red's 15 volts, black ground, and the two returns from the end stop Halifax. So on the other end here, you need to have some transistors in order to have the smoothie board interpret that as high low. Uh, I think that's uh, the bulk of it. Uh, number of little things that come out to bite you as you're trying to put it together. This is not actually attached, this is just to allow it to sit flat on the table. And if I bring this guy in, that's closer to how it'll look. And the spindle itself sits in an aluminium thing here that mounts to these outer three holes on each side. Uh, these holes here are for the uh, bearing blocks, these are for the nut to move it up and forward, these two on each side are for aluminium brackets for the end stops, and then this one's in use, the other one I'm just using the actual uh, metal that's attached to this nut uh, for detection with this little blue guy. Quite happy with the, uh, again, you have to factor for the width here, and this when it's fully compressed you're going to lose in z-axis. So it's one of the other various things to take into account. If you're designing one of these yourself, one of the tips that I can give you, which uh, would have been handy to know at the start, was to move these guys out slightly. At the moment, the rails will go past this block, but these bearings hit it. So I could uh, cut this back a bit, but the actual mounting holes are all right at the edge of this. So if I do that, then I'll have to work out some other way of mounting it that doesn't interact with this bearing here. Which is not impossible, but again, another level of difficulty. If these were out further, uh, these rails could go past, uh, which I would recommend doing. So use 400mm rails and a 300mm lead screw, so these guys can just come up here, and that way you get full travel, because obviously when you've got this thing here, you're, only, you're already losing a fair bit of the travel out of the 300 because this won't go further than there, and this won't go further than there. But if you uh, plan ahead and uh, cut this guy down so that this will actually go over the top, we'll clear that, then you should be able to get a little bit of extra travel in the Z. The standard 3040 has about 55 millimeters of Z travel, and something like this gets you into the ballpark of 140, 150. Uh, you get more if you don't have this on here, because this obviously has to exist when it's compressed so you have to take into account that you're losing that extra space but that's it, it's a reasonably uh, interesting build uh, somewhat straightforward until you start it and then you find all the little things coming forward and uh, making life interesting as they say For this project I remounted the smoothie board into this new plywood box with a fan, a little 15 volt rail. Instead of using that rail I'd use the thicker cable in the far top of frame to uh, run into the smoothie board so the smoothie has plenty of uh, amperage for the stepper motors. I also applied a little heat sink to uh, various components including the Cortex-M chip on the, step the smoothie board. can't really see it gets that hot but can't really hurt either. Uh, to now have X, Y, Z, and uh, the fourth, the A axis wired up. Uh, you have to do a firmware rebuild in order to get the fourth and fifth axis going on the smoothie board, which is, in my opinion, a touch unfortunate because uh, to build the firmware just for one configuration parameter is a bit of a pain. Certainly a deterrent for less uh, less enthused people, shall we say. A uh, little proto board there is just a couple of resistors and some transistors. Uh, we've got X, Y, and Z, uh, high low limit switches. So that takes the higher voltage signal and the smoothie board. Normally, this is actually a smoothie clone, which normally puts out a certain voltage. 
So you need to have the transistor there in order to open and close the circuit for the smoothie board to recognise the end sensors. There are resistor arrays in there to sort of cut the power level down. I mean, if you're doing it the other way, you could use an NPN and a PNV in combination to allow closing and opening and closing the circuit from a higher voltage, but resistor array seems like the obvious cheating if you were trying to get away with without using transistors. I highly recommend making one of these little breakout boards though because it just makes your life a lot simpler. This also has holes in the back for not only limit switches but also uh, the A and B and the limit switches for A and B. So the plywood box including a fan which blows over the, uh, the smoothie board in the direction that the heat sinks are for the stepper drivers can't be a bad thing.